ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتج ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون أما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز المحكم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال ربكم أدعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم تعفرين وقال الله تعالى أيضا وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون My dear respectful brothers and sisters today in this gathering in this Friday sermon I would like to highlight an issue which is which is one of the main stages that we can use or it is the toolkit toolkit of what how we can solve our problems today we know almost in every country a Muslim country there is crisis there are so many forms of crisis instabilities chaos genocides killings and ruthless all, all kinds of ruthless and craziness are going in our countries that is uh, where the, most of the Muslim countries are in this situation today and Muslims who are out of those countries who live in peaceful countries they have their problems too which is not less than the one that those who are back home or um, Muslim, mainly Muslim populated countries and uh, where the people are there they have a problem so the same problem or worse is also here in, uh, among us that means from there you can you can introduce this you can introduce one thing which is that there is a kind of punishment which is about us as Muslims but then we have to be realistic if we do not confess that and we never accept it, then it will not be stopped first of all we have to admit that there is a problem we have to admit there is a wrongdoing and then when we admit that then we recognize what is going on and then to identify that problem and then we figure out that the problem came from us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٌ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ إِلْدِيكُمْ وَيَأْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ Allah is saying whatever calamity and tragedy that fall upon you is because it's as a result of what your hands did what you people did that's the consequence so when we confess that and we we know that then the next is that we should realize something else which is that we should know that we as Muslims we have to react upon every problem whether it is within Muslim country or outside that but how can you do that it is first of all that you should know that um, you do, yeah, there are many steps that you should take. And those steps is one of them that you reacted with action. That is solving the problem. Because 
one thing we have to realize, when there's a problem and there's collective punishment, it is not that the punish that every one of us did the mistake. There were some people who, there are some people who are in us, and among, they are among us and they did wrong. But others do not stop them from coming to it. Consequently, this can happen. So this is how things can happen. And then it is our responsibility to check that and to stop it as much as we can. If we can do it, but we have to know who is, what is wrong and who is doing the wrong. And when we know that, then after that we will try to stop it. If action, yes. If not, then um, talking, speak. If not, then disliking. If not, uh, even in disliking, within all that, there is one thing which we should keep in mind. That is the art. So today, I'm picking up this thing up at this point, which is the art. It is one of the major steps that Muslims should do in all, in all our duties, be it individual, activity, or collectively, all that. We must always have this element, the art. If you lose that, then you are, you are not in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one thing we have to realize, the human being, not only Muslims, the human being are always in two situations. Whether one is attracting the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the anger of Allah, he is attracting and obtaining it. Or, he is obtaining the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are in between these two. And what can make you to do one of them is the dua. If you keep sub, uh, um, begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the time you are in supplication to Allah, then you get the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If not, it becomes the other way around. It becomes that you are arrogant and you are so strong and you believe that you are higher than Allah and you believe that what, uh, in your situation that you are someone who is very high to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you will pay the price that is where you bring the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects that from us in the first word which I uh, I cited before, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أَدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord says to you, أَدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Invocate me and ask me for anything, then I will respond to you. I will respond to your invocation and will give you what you want. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us. So you just ask me, knock the door, and the door will be open. If that is done, then what else are you looking for? <coughs> In the next word, the next word Allah says, Inna al-lalina yastakbiruna an ibadati sayadkhuluna jahannama dafirin. Indeed, those who, are, those who scorn my worship, those who are very arrogant and undermine my worship. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that supplication is, is worship in itself. If you, if those, then, those who are in this situation of being arrogant and to the level that they are not begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, Sayyidkhuluna jahannama dakhirin. They will enter hellfire in humiliation. Why? They, before, because they were undermining Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they are undermined. And when they are entering the hellfire, it's not like any god else, but they will enter it with humiliation and weakness. In that situation, brothers and sisters, then it is the two ways. Whether you struggle and work for 
getting the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or where you work for getting the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's in between. And that is the main is dua. So the dua, which is in this position, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in hadith, Sariq al-Bukhari, which is authentic. He says, Addu'a uhu al-ibadah. Supplication is worshiping. So the, the two are interchangeable, two terms. Du'a, because in our, when we are praying, it's called prayer. And when we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's called also prayer. So they are the same words. So when you are, when we are praying, that is a specific du'a. And when you are outside in the masjid or anywhere in the, or in the street, you can still beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you are just alone and going to your will. So then, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said in another hadith, which there is a kind of doubt in it is Jain, the insanity of God. Addu'a'u mukhul ibad. The supplication is the brain of the worship. So the brain, we as a human being, everything is about the brain. If there is a kind of um, uh, any problem in your brain, then you cannot stand, you cannot change your situation, you cannot talk, you can't take any action. So the, the brain is the center of our existence. Then the two hadiths are gives us the same meaning. Why then in this du'a, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in another verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, how we accept it, and Allah is encouraging us. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانِي فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Allah is saying, and if many slaves ask you concerning me, tell them I'm near to them. Near to them and listening to them. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ اللَّيْهِ مِنْ حَبِّ الْوَرِيدِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closer to us, I, the, the, our vessels, our to our vessels or the, uh, the glands in our neck and in our th throat. He is closer, then closer to us than those vessels which are in us. So Allah is that close to us and He hears us. And He says, I respond to the supplicant and I answer to the one who, who anyone who asks him anything. I give them. But there is a condition. Allah is saying, Ida da'ani. That is if he asks me. If he doesn't ask me, then I'm not forcing him. Very simple. So if he asks me, then I will give him. What else we can understand from that word, Ida da'ani, is that we there are many, many people who are who believe and they think they are begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they are begging others. For example, when you are asking something of your Lord, Allah, saying, Oh Allah, give me this thing. And you say, Oh Allah, give me this thing. Before the awliya, before the nabi, so and so. So you are making interceding because you believe you are weak and you are someone who is not biased, you are not close to Allah, that's what you believe. So you think someone is closer to Allah than you, then you want to get intercession to go to that person, and that person will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on behalf of you. That is wrong. That means you are not asking Allah. Allah will, the symbol is that he, he says that your, I didn't receive your application, period. So when it is in that situation, Allah says that I from yesterday will be when you may be. Then let them obey me and believe in me. So to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
you need to ask Allah direct. That's how you obey. And that's how you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you, uh, you, you, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through someone, through something, that means you cannot rely on Allah. Between you and Allah, there's kind of doubt in you. You think this is not reliable. So let me get help from somebody else. That means you do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very clear. Then, is the belief is important. But there's one thing that, if someone tells you that Chef X so and so, or Awliya Abuay Mr. so and so, is the one that if you go to him, he can beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on behalf of you and you will get such and such things because yours may not be accepted. That person is a liar. He's misleading you to the worst. You must know that you, if you are the, the worst, if you are, say, even a disbeliever, if you are atheist, if you are a gang, and you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will respond to you. And if you are the most biased person, uh, the one who is very faithful, always in the masjid, and you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will answer to you. So it is the same thing. And there are even hadith is mentioning that the prayer of the one who is in loss is always more quicker than the one who is um, already in a good situation. And what is the main proof of that? Look at this. The, who is the most criminal, the most sinful, the most uh, crazy one in, in the, of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The one who went to the worst, the so astray, and the, the highest wrongdoer, that is Iblis. What about if Iblis asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something and Allah gives him? So let's take an example of the first two sinners. That's uh, Iblis and Adam, our first father. Iblis, when he committed that great sin, very heinous sin, he said, Oh my God, let me be alive until the day you are resurrecting them. So he asked, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him like a permanent life until the day of the resurrection. And Allah said to him, I will give it to you la yawmin ma'alun, take a day which is fixed, that is already in my plan. But you, so Allah accepted his prayer, although not full, but partially. Mm -hmm. So Iblis, the supplication of Iblis was accepted by Allah. And Adam, when he sinned, Allah did not say, I give you all this paradise and said to you, eat from it abundantly. You earn like unlimitedly from wherever you want, except one tree. And you went to the only one tree, then that's not acceptable. Allah did not say to him. Adam said, and if they said, Qala Rabbana, inna na dalamna anfusana, wa illam takfir lana, wa tarhamna ala nakhirana min al-fasirin. So they said, we wronged ourselves, or our Lord, we wronged ourselves, and if you do not forgive us, we will be among the losers. And Allah accepted their prayer, and accepted their tawbah, then they were forgiven. Therefore, that is good enough for you. What about if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something and you didn't get the result for a time? What is wrong? That is, you should know there are many ways of uh, dua it is accepted. If you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something, either you get the acceptance right away, or it's postponed for another time, or it is uh, it is protecting you from the hellfire in the hereafter, or it protects you from something calamity which could happen to you, or if it is it is not your interest even, but you think it's your interest, or it is even harmful for you. It could be all these ways. 
So you, you cannot understand, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah will give you. I told you how that was the Quran, you have to ask the Quran, you know. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. My dear respectful brothers and sisters, prayer for Allah سبحانه وتعالى. You have to maintain it with sincerity, with good heart, without doubt. So, Prophet محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم says in Hadith: "أتقوا ربكم." وأنتم موقنون انبوك يا الله الله سبحانه وتعالى يا الله why you really you sure that he will give you so certain you must have the certain in you then if you are somehow uncertain it will not work for you and the time is not on our side but I would like just to remind you you see if you go to any mall just the eating center, you will find whenever you buy something, they will say to you, buy one and get one free. If you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one, he will give you one free also, or more. Imagine that. And let us like say, and most of you maybe will know, in the case of, it's all in the Quran, in the case of Nabiullah Ayyub, when he said, قال رب إني مسني الضر وأنت أرحم الراحمين. He said, Oh Lord, I have been touched by difficulties, calamity. So then Allah says, فكشفنا ما به من ضر وآتيناه أهله. So we we removed the problem from him and we brought his family to him. The best example of this one is that if you are immigrant. Here now, you came from war torn country. Say the worst in the Middle East, in Africa, wherever you came from. You came here. So, and the refugee board did not accept you. You didn't get job. You are in trouble and you left your family behind. And you don't know their situation. That is the worst situation, right? When someone, that someone can suffer from. When you are in this situation, if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to solve your problem here, to get uh, admitted, and you get accepted and then get taught, then Allah will bring your family to you, your wife and your husband and your children. So that's very clear. That's family reunion, Allah will make it for you. Because you ask one, Allah is going to give you the other, the other one. Many examples, in the case of Nabi Allah, and Junis, when he went to the, uh, when he was thrown into the middle of the ocean and inside the shark's belly, and he cried from there. And he said, and in that situation he said, he accepted his situation. When he said all that, Allah says, فَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمِّ وَأَرْسَلْنَاهُ إِلَىٰ مِئَةِ أَلْفِ أَوْلِ زِيْتَنِ He took him from the darkness of that belly of the shark, and then he took him out of the ocean, and then we took him to leave, and from there we sent him to another nation, because he realized it, that he committed a sin. And that thing was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to him a nation. He said to him, you are in charge of this nation. Teach him the monotheism of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They bothered him. He had, he had hard time with them. Then he could not tolerate anymore. And what happened? Finally, when he became sick and tired of them, he decided to go. He just went to travel to another country. So in the ship, when he was in the ship to travel, what happened in hurricane camp in the in late night when they are in the middle of the ocean and waves went higher. When they were at risk of collapsing to sink, the boat to sink, then they 
they blame, they, they said this one, which became true. They said there is someone who is a sinner in art. Someone maybe who has stolen property and running away with the property, or have killed somebody and running away, or something, somebody who did mistake must be in, in this ship. And they did the Quran that they, they flip for them. And after that, it fell on him three times. They have no choice. They said to him, either we throw you into the ocean and you die there, or all of us will die. What's the solution? They throw him out into the ocean. And then shark took him. The, the shark even didn't want to digest him and crunch him. He just put him to his belly. He swallowed him. And from there he cried to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, La ilaha illa anta. There is no Allah, or there is no Lord, or there is no God except you. Inni kuntu min It is me who did wrong. It's my mistake. He yeah, are peace of God. So when he recognized and admitted his mistake, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Then we took him from that darkness and we sent him to another nation who definitely accepted him and in my and comfortable situation. So imagine, in that all, there are many examples. In the case of Zakaria, I want to conclude with this one, that when he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he said, and, and he said, Oh Lord, give me waladin, yaritumi, wa yaritumi, ali ya'akuba, which alu rabbi rabiyya. He requested two things. Allah to give him a son who will inherit his religion and his good uh, uh, right way of uh, Islam that he had so that to pass it to others and that of the Ahl Ya'qub, the family of Ya'qub, that ancestors who were good. So what happened? And he, he said, and that son, oh Lord, make him one with whom you are blessed. You are, you are satisfied with him. Allah did not only stop with that, he had him, he gave him some more that he said, Ya Zakaria, Ya Mubashir, Kadirullah, Ya Mubashir, Ya Ya, O Zakaria, glad tidings to you that we are giving you a son. And his name is Ya Ya. So Allah gave him son, number one. And he gave him his name. So the only person that Allah that was named by Allah, and then the only person who got his name before he was born and then Allah says and we didn't give this name anyone before him so he was the first person who got his name this name John. he got all that and all then after that Allah became uh, happy with him and he says in the other verses, the time is up, but um, you can recite it in Surah to Maryam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reciting how this and when he says, Ya 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 Fudil Kitab of the Kulwakim, Ya Akim Ya Fudil Kitab of And uh, Allah says, Ya Ya, take, hold fast the Kitab, the script, when he was seven, when he was still a child. So, in conclusion, is that if you ask one thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you ask Allah one, you will get two. You ask two, you will get three or four. And your prayer will be accepted as long as you are a human being. And it's sadly that you are biased. And our, the, the problem we have, one of the tools, the tools that we have is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the problem from us. Uh, Thank you.